It kind of feels like sinking. Like the water is rising quick, and you can barely keep your mouth above the level. And then it just feels like falling. When you've given up fighting and you're just there, totally numb to anything around you. You see all the pretty sights, you hear all the birds chirping, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. Nothing does. Nothing matters. Because you can't feel it anyway. If you're lucky enough to be able to fake a social life, you feel like you're a burden on them. Like you're just extra weight that they don't need in their lives. And they'll probably just abandon you in the end anyway. People that seem like they care almost feel annoying because you don't care. You're just numb. And then you wake up. I think one of the biggest things about depression is that everyone experiences it differently. It affects different people in different ways. So it can be really hard to identify. So one of the first things I wanted to look at when making this documentary was the different ways it can affect people. I don't know really how to put this into words because... Depression to me feels like I'm sinking into a dark hole which nobody else can see. It's a castle that I've built up so far to keep people away that nobody is going to be able to save me but myself, and that's that doesn't happen <laughs> at all. <laughs> it feels like wanting to sleep for hours on end for not wanting to wake up, to not wanting to step outside, to sit there and think blankly about what I'm doing with my life. That's what it feels like to me. Depression to me feels like almost like your shadow exists. I know it's a kind of a very broad statement, but for me it always felt like there was somebody else there, you know. Um, not necessarily on a bipolar level, but it always felt like there was this kind of almost a being kind of pushing me down the wrong paths in life. So. When I finally was uh, you know, able to be happy about something, this person was giving me reasons not to be happy. So if I was in a relationship, I'd be thinking about happy things, like the good times that we've had and, and kind of the future, while this other person was telling me, like, you know, just as, a, as an example, maybe she's cheating, cheating on you, maybe she's doing this to you and all this stuff. Um, so to me, it always felt like I had this consistent, uh, you know, bad influence in my life that was trying to steer me off the road and down a very dark place. Um, and, you know, the, the, the more that I ignored depression, the heavier that this burden became for me. So that's kind of the way that always, depression has always felt for me. Depression is the inability to be happy. Because it's more like, I live in a manner where I just choose my mood and if I'm in a neutral state I could either be unhappy or happy and I'll choose to be happy but depression is when I no longer have that choice no matter if it's logical or illogical depression is essentially the inability to feel happy it's it comes in all shapes and sizes, but the most often thing is that it's just emotional turbulence. You have a moment of clarity, and then it gets torn away. You're up, you're down, you're left, you're right. You don't exactly know what you're wanting to do next. 
um, but most of the time it feels like you are trapped in a cockpit. You see the world around you, but you can't reach out to it, and that's... It's almost like a claustrophobia. You have these interactions with people, you speak to them on a daily basis, you see how they live their lives, and you see the happiness that they have, you see the sadness that they have, and you appreciate all of it, but then when you have the depression kick in, you can only see the sadness. And whether it's sadness for yourself or sadness for the other person that you're seeing, you, you can't help but you know just kind of dig yourself into a hole as it goes down and down. You find yourself trapped, and that's how I picture my turbulences. Despair. That's pretty much how I would describe it. It goes beyond just being sad. It's just this seemingly endless pit of despair that I know eventually will end, but it doesn't feel like it will. There are days when it feels like it's just not gonna happen, like it's not gonna get better, and even though I know to tell myself, it will, I don't really believe myself. And so I just feel like, you know, this is how it's gonna be, I'm gonna be sad and depressed my entire life and nothing will ever go good for me. In about as many ways as it affects different people, they all have their own specific ways of dealing with it. The things that they might find help because it affects everyone differently. I try and logic everything. Like, regardless of mood or whatever, it's, it's how I catch on to things that are extremely logical, like math. It's because it's logical, it makes sense. Moods don't exactly do the same thing, but I always try and rationalize things like they do. <laughs> so I'll, I can recognize depression. I recognize that I'm feeling it without it really controlling me. Like, I know that I'm not happy. I know why I don't feel happy. Even though it's something I can't fix at the moment, I just keep in mind that it's temporary and I know that as bad as I'm feeling right now, I just have to think of how it's not gonna affect me in the future. You always have to big picture the whole thing because you can't little picture anything because that's when it starts to be an issue. The way I dealt with depression for the longest time was just ignoring it and that's not something you should do. Uh, I went a very long time not understanding what to do in situations when I was you know, feeling sad or, or feeling depressed or really kind of bringing myself to the edge and, and you know, wanting to jump. I learned over the years that the best thing for me to do is to open up and discuss it with people. Um, I was afraid for the, for the longest time that depression was something that was embarrassing, that was something that I shouldn't be sharing, that it's just, I'm sad, I'll get over it. As many people with depression know, that's not the case. So for me personally, whenever I feel sad, whenever I feel, you know, kind of a dark, a darkness kind of come over me, whenever that bully comes back and decides that he wants to screw up my day, my month, um, I just try and surround myself with, you know, good people, my friends, my family. Um, you know, with the invention of cell phones, it's very easy to connect with somebody. Uh, they, they're such a, you know, a lot of people say that cell phones are ruining, you know, the social world in, in ways they are, but in ways they're also connecting us together. So um, the way that I deal with this is simply I'll send a message to somebody that I know that will talk to you. For me, battling this depression and kind of counteracting it's bad is by talking to people that I know will bring out the good. I laugh a lot. I keep a smile on my face and try and be happy-go-lucky so I don't have to remember of what is actually making me depressed. Fuck, I'm sorry. I try and make jokes and I try and put myself into things and I try and make friends. I live with two other people so that I don't have to be alone. <laughs> but if I had the choice, I'd be back in my room. The one thing I really do to deal with it that I can't really do with other people that are beside me is video games. That's what I've been playing World of Warcraft since 2008. <laughs> 
which <laughs> is a very, very long time. I've made more friends there than I have in real life. I try my best to remain positive, but it's very difficult and usually doesn't work. So I usually end up distracting myself with various things that I know that I do enjoy. So if I feel like going for a walk in the woods, I will. Or um, if I feel like just hanging out in my room reading a book, I'll do that as well. Distractions really do work very well for me. I think every person is different, so sometimes it won't work for a person, but I know that for me it does work very well, and it doesn't always work, but I know that other people have tried to distract themselves, and it's just worthless. They aren't able to distract themselves, and uh, you know, sometimes I'm not even able to, so it's different for everyone. I'm an introvert for the most part, so I spend most of my time to myself, and it helps. It does help when I, you know, am with people if they tell me to go with them. Against all, you know, my emotions screaming, no, I want to stay alone, I'll go with them because I know in the end it'll end up helping, you know, or it'll at least, you know, do something fruitful anyways. But a lot of the times when I'm depressed, I would stay by myself, and I have the collection you can see here, and these actually are memories of happier times. Like, if I'm absolutely happy about something, whether it's just something mundane or something extraordinary, I will go out and I'll buy something to remind myself of that happy time. Even if it's nothing related to it exactly, just it gives me a reminder that I had that moment. And thinking back on those moments kind of gets me through whatever the depression is at the time. Depending on how severe it is, I might, end up, I might end up going out with friends. If it's just a mild thing where I just want to be left alone, I'll just sit here and admire the happiness I had previously. I keep adding to this collection. It's, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I keep adding to it, so. Because it affects everyone differently, I want to look at which aspects of life it is effective for these people. When I first had it, I didn't know I had it. It's something I realized as I grew up because I realized I had it as a kid. And children adapt to everything because I was this kid who had no friends in the world and I basically hated going to school. I was very upset. I would cry every morning. and. I didn't realize that that was depression because I didn't even know that the word depression existed. I didn't know what it was and it wasn't until I grew up and became a teenager, I think I discovered it at about 13 years old and that's when I realized, wow, okay, I've been depressed my entire childhood and for the longest time I thought that was normal, that was how my life was going to be because kids will adapt to any situation they're put in. So um, after about four years of feeling sad, I was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna stop complaining to my parents and just accept that this is how it's going to be. And because of that, my parents thought I was fine until a few le years later, they realized that I wasn't. So that is, so basically it's been with you your entire life? I would say so from grade one until now. There's no real positive spin on depression. Most of the time it's just a negative thing. You can, you can overcome it, but you can't get rid of it. There's always going to be some sort of depression there. There's always going to be something lingering over your shoulder. It's a ghost that will never go away. It's haunting you. But you can cope with it, I find. Just like I have my memories, I would be able to I, I usually am able to overcome just the small things every once in a while. And for the most part, when it does happen, I have people that would like to help out. I've actually gotten a lot more friends over the years than I can really even count. So kind of, if, if, even though you feel like you're alone, you know that you're not. I, I know, and, and that's, that's the problem with depression. You have these moments where you know 
you are going to be okay. You have these moments where you know that there is a brighter side of things. You have these moments where you know there's a silver lining to every moment. It's just depression takes over and you just don't care about them or you don't recognize them or you try so hard to see them but they're just not there. So sometimes you just have to take, I'm not a religious person by any stretch of the imagination, but you have to take a leap of faith knowing that you have gotten over it before or that you have to take this one chance to try to get over it now. I'll, <laughs> I'll go out with people to hang out even if I'm not going to be you know, doing anything that night because it might lead me out of depression. It might make me even more depressed depending on you know, the events of the night but for the most part I'd like to take that chance to see if I can kind of get away from what's bothering me. Depression has affected me in, in a lot of different ways. Um, personal life, professional life, it, it's just really had this overall grasp on a lot of aspects of my life. Um, when I first moved to, to Halifax in 2010, I, I didn't know what it was. You know, I had always dealt with kind of being sad, but being in my home, I was always consistently in a house with other people. So there's people there that I could talk to, my mom, everybody, there was just, I was surrounded by people. So even when I decided to lock myself in my room because I wasn't feeling very good or, or I was sad, I didn't want to burden other people, there would still be people there. I would never walk out of my room and not have people around me. So when I moved up to Halifax and you know was on my own, I was in my own apartment, I was paying for my own bills, uh, that's when you know I would step out of my room and no one would be there. So it, it seemed to deepen and heighten uh, what I was dealing with in the past. So because of that, my mindset was to fill my workload with as much work as I possibly could. So the busier I am, the less time I have to pay attention to this depression and what I thought it would go away. What that did was that exhausted me on a professional level so I would be you know, juggling 10 projects at once just because I thought I could and I really couldn't. Um, I wasn't good at dictating and letting other people kind of take jobs for me and, and help me out. Um, so what it did was it really exhausted me early on so that my creativeness wasn't way up there. I was just doing as much as I possibly could when I maybe should have been doing a little bit less and, and kind of doing better projects each time. And this even now, today, I try and fill my workload. I'm doing much better today in kind of um, finding a balance between that and professional life so I'm not overbooked all the time. And this is the first year that I've actually booked days off, which is nice. But it's, it's definitely had a very big effect on me simply working for the sake of ignoring it and helping me to ignore it. On a personal level, it's had its burden on many different relationships in my life. Um, for the longest time, I felt like I was kind of a burden to my family because when it came to like family outings or anything like that, I was always in a very upset mindset. I was always you know, mad about something or aggravated about something. My, my attention span and my frustration levels would go off on the smallest thing. And it affected me that way because it just, it was weird. It just aggravated me to be in the presence of people. If I'm around people, I want to make sure they're happy. I want to make sure they're having fun. That's always been my thing. And for some reason, I always felt like no matter what I do, it'll never be that. I'll never be able to, you know, make my family happy or have the people around me have fun and want to be with me. So that affected me and it made me just kind of angry all the time. And not in a violent way in, in any means, but just like a mental state where I was just like, I'll just sit down and shut up and just kind of be here. So I won't burden anybody. I started kind of being a little bit antisocial to my family. It was, it was bad. For, on a relationship level with, um, you know, like girlfriend, boyfriend scenarios, uh, it's had its toll really badly. Um, when you're, for me personally, when you're in deep with depression, um, it's hard to get out of that kind of nook. It's hard to get out of what is, is just a dark place. Um, you try very hard, but it just seems like whenever you get one step up, you're down too. So with a personal level on, on our relationships, I mean, I've had relationships. I had one big relationship basically implode to the point where it's over now and it's, it didn't end well um, because of, I don't attribute depression specifically 100% of that, but it was a very big part of it because I couldn't understand who I was or what or how to deal with it in the correct way. 
and by not understanding it, uh, I was presenting a very false image of myself and a very false attitude of myself because I didn't know what else to do. So it's had a very big presence and depression has affected my life in a very bad way. Very negatively. It's a constant uphill struggle of me wanting to do something about it and me knowing that or thinking to my, not knowing, but thinking to myself that there is nothing that I can do about it. That if I tell anybody that I feel this way, it'll just make people not like me. So you've been going to the suits for a while? Since mom died, which was back in 2007. Blizzard really swore a little more. <laughs> It really swirled the Warcraft. Yeah, that is true. They released it in 2007. Oh my god. <laughs> it's really weird because I didn't feel depressed before, but after being completely ignored for six months right after that event, it doesn't really mentally help a kid too much. <laughs> Especially where your dad's going through his own shit. But it... Can't blame him. In the past or currently? Currently... I only seem to suffer from seasonal depression. Which is... Related to like a chemical things to do with the sun and whatever. But how it affects me is it seems to, it stresses you out, I guess, more or less. Because <laughs> again, where I choose to be happy, if given the neutral point to choose either way, I don't get that choice, but I'll be at neutral points which should make sense for me to choose happiness from that point instead of being the other way. And I don't, I don't get to ever bounce back from that. And that's partially why I like to live in the happy place. Like if I get, if, if I get to be either way, I'll choose to be the happy, because obviously who would choose to be the other one anyway, but <laughs> I like spending as much time in the happy place as I can because There'll be moments where I don't get to do that. Since we all have different ways of dealing with things, we all pick up little tidbits that might help. So I decided to ask them what little pieces of advice they might give to someone in a similar situation. I think the biggest bit of advice I could give to anybody who is going through depression is find stuff that makes you happy. Um, me personally, I've I've just recently started doing a lot more YouTube. Uh, I found that you know I enjoy the whole YouTube community, kind of diving in, watching people do things. It, it was something that made me happy. It was a small niche market to you know just kind of fill my time. But then I started loving it more and more and more. Um, it was busy work, but it was a good kind of busy work because it gave me something to do, and I felt very happy doing it. So one of the biggest things that I think I would tell people, and this isn't the biggest thing, but one of the biggest things I would tell people is definitely find something that you love and do it, no matter what anybody says. If somebody says, like, I don't understand that that's stupid, if it makes you happy, do it anyways. Don't worry about it. As long as it makes you happy, do what you want to do. The biggest thing, the penultimate thing that I, you know, I want to tell people with depression, the biggest thing that's a part of a film that I just made, um, the biggest theme that I think needs to be much more on the front line than it is, is talking. So many people talk about depression as if it's a sadness that you could just swipe under the rug and then continue with your day. It's not. It is a, it's a disease. A lot of people have said this. It is a disease. It hurts physically, mentally. Um, you know, it's attributed to a lot of things with anxiety attacks. It's, it's a, it is a thing that is not just something that you can ignore. So the biggest thing for me is that if you are going through depression, um, and if it gets to the point where it's very, very deep and it gets to a point where it's like you're talking about suicide, you're thinking bad, bad thoughts, uh, talk to somebody. Just talk to somebody. It's going to seem scary. You're going to feel embarrassed as hell. You're going to think that uh, I don't want to burden myself or burden other people with these problems. Nobody 
will ever think that your problems are a burden. Nobody. Depression sucks. We don't talk about it enough in society, which is a shame, but we are getting there, which is nice. But not a lot of people are gonna look at you when you are at the edge thinking that you wanna end your life because you are so sad all the time. Nobody's gonna tell you to do it. Nobody's gonna tell you to, you know, man up and, and grow a set of balls and just get over it. Nobody's gonna tell you that. They're gonna help you with that. So I think the biggest thing is try and get yourself over that hurdle and simply open a discussion about what you have. Because the more you talk, the more you understand. And the more you realize that there are a lot of people out there who have the exact same thing you do and that want to help you. Again, the big picture. You have to open up your mind a lot. And it's not as easy to do anything as it is to, to talk about it. Because in the moment where you are depressed, you can't big picture things. You're only little picture things. And sometimes it's very small of a picture. Like, you can get so caught up over just you didn't have a conversation in the right manner today. You wanted to say something clever to someone when they said something to you. And that can ruin your week. <laughs> like, not just your day, not just your hour, your, your week, because you get caught up on that and then you dwell. But if you can big picture the whole thing and just be like, well, flip that, but that's not gonna matter. They're not gonna think about this an hour from now. I might be thinking about it an hour from now, but it's not gonna matter to anyone else. So why should it matter to me? So you just gotta always big picture it. And then ultimately, if that's what you're so concerned about, build up for next time. <laughs> always gonna be a next time. It's, it's temporary. Yeah. Yeah, it's always temporary, and that's another thing you have to keep in mind, is as long as it may seem, while you're feeling that way, it is always temporary. Even if your temporary is a couple weeks, a couple years, it will pass. Please go see a doctor. Please go and get the medication for it if you feel that you are depressed. Please talk to somebody, do something about it. It's hell in a handbasket. You don't want to go through that for years. You don't want to sit there and hate yourself, thinking that you're nothing, thinking that nobody wants you. The best help is professional help. Talking about it is great, but if you are very, very depressed, the only help that you're going to be able to get that is going to do anything is medication. Playing video games helped me, but you have to find something that necessarily doesn't degrade the amount of sadness you feel for yourself, but helps you understand why you feel like this. Like, let's say you love music, but you feel depressed, write a song. If you like art, draw something. Like, I personally absolutely love to draw. But I've had a block of... I haven't been able to draw in... years. It was grade 11, which was... 2008! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, like grade... yeah, grade 11. Just 2008. If you want to hear music, play something. Like, there's apps on a cell phone. You can pretend you're playing a piano. If you actually have instruments like I'm looking at right now, <laughs> play them, pretend to play. Write something, write a story, poems, work out. Keep your mind busy with something so you don't feel like you're drowning yourself. Find somebody who is going through the exact same thing you are. That's the best way of going about it. Forms, chat sites. Like, if anything, go Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, anything. You can be a completely different person online. It's the best way to go about not being yourself <laughs> and then find yourself. Pets help too. Just find what you're most passionate about before you are depressed and you'll be able to help it. Not necessarily cure it because you can't cure it. It's not something that can be cured. It's there. It doesn't actually ever go away. It's like having a twin. They don't go away. <laughs> you can just medicate them and they'll be perfectly fine. 
Is that really the only example that I could give? I'm so sorry, oh my god. Just keep going. Because if there is one thing I've learned about life, and my father told me this, and this is how I learned it, is that life comes with ups and it comes with downs. And it may seem that you're going to be down forever, for a long, long time, but there will be moments when your life is great and you're up and happy. And if you don't keep going, you're not going to get all those happy moments. So yeah, just keep going. Think logically and rationally. Emotionally, is, it's, it's, as I said, turbulence. You, you don't know whether you want to feel happy or sad, even though you know you're looking at something that should make you happy or sad. You just feel sad. Uh, anger is the same thing. You feel angry at things even though you really shouldn't. Someone's trying to cheer you up and you just get annoyed at them and you just want to hit them or you just want to walk away. Don't do that. Take what you have and think it through. Find a happy thing that you know you do like and stick with that for just a while. I would, as I said, sit at my desk and stare sometimes for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, and just remember all the things that I've done in the past. They may not make me happy at the time because I'm depressed, but eventually the happiness does seep in. Find something you enjoy doing, play video games, go outside, play, read a book. Whatever you enjoy doing, do it. Even if it's not making you happy at the moment, it will break through. And that's a good way to overcome whatever is bothering you. And we all have ideals. We all have fantasies and maybe illusions. But the last thing I wanted to look at is what people would like to see change in society and what people would like to see change in their everyday life that might make depression a little bit more understood. People need to understand that it's not just a mood. It's not just something people choose to be. It's not as easy as just get over it. Because as much as I'm basically saying all those things, it's only because of the way that my mind works that I was able to get over it, you know, big picture and logical thinking. But it, none of that makes sense when you're feeling that way. If you're depressed, it's, it closes in on you. You can't broaden your thoughts. You can't be happy just because someone wants you to be happy. Obviously, you don't want to feel that way. And I believe some people feel like people just love feeling that way, just for attention. <laughs> and people need to understand that it's not that way. And if people pretend to be that way for attention, they really shouldn't, because it's not at all something that should be glorified. I would like to see people not just brush it off as, oh, well, if you don't think about it, you won't be sad. Really? It's depression. You... <sighs> I want to see people stand up for that fact that people do need the help, that it's not just a phase or a sadness. It is a legit mental condition that people have that need, they need help for. But no, I really do want people to stop thinking that it's just a phase. That's a tough one. I appreciate the question though. I can't say get rid of all the negativ negativity. There's, there's no way that's gonna happen. It's, it's part of the way that we've grown up. It's part of the way we've been raised. I would like to see a lot more equality amongst others though. Despite having generations of, you know, propaganda towards equality and propaganda against equality, we're still pretty much the same way as we used to be. It's a different form of racism, it's a different form of sexism, it's a different form of et cetera-isms. But in the end, they're all, for the most part, the same as they were. Um, I find that if there were less of those strifes in the world, we'd probably be looking at a, not so much a kinder place, but a, a less miserable place. There would still be 
the bad, there'd still be the good, but then you wouldn't have this gray area where it's just like, I don't feel up to doing this because of the events that are happening around me. I think that everybody in the world has a form of depression. No matter what creed you look at, no matter what religion, no matter what faith, you're always gonna find someone who has depression. And I find that most people in the world can mask that depression, but everyone has it. And I find myself, I get depressed when I see someone else who has more than I do. But not that I'm jealous or envious, it's that I know I can probably accomplish the same thing, yet something holds me back, something frightens me, something gets in the way of it. I find that when I'm depressed, it's because of a thing that someone else does and gets away with whether it's good or bad, and I can't. So, I find that if there was any sort of, you know, equality, I guess, I'll use the word equality because I did previously. If there was an equality to everybody, if they had, you know, everyone shared the same views, then it would be a boring world, but it would also be a, you know, less depressing one because there wouldn't be this desire to have one up to the other person. There wouldn't be this, uh, need to look in through the windows and see a family having dinner while you're out in the cold. And I find that a lot of that can cause a lot of people's depression. Me personally, it's part of it. I don't find, you know, I'm standing outside of someone's house every very often and looking in and saying, oh, I'm jealous. But I can imagine the feeling of that. And just imagining that feeling makes me depressed. One thing that I think would be a huge change in the whole the kind of side of depression is a more better understanding of what it is. Um, there's a lot of focus on things like cancer, um, which isn't a bad thing. I think the focus should be there. But I think if we start talking about depression on the same kind of scale as some of the other you know, diseases that there are, uh, I think it'll help everybody these kind of take, you know, dealing with this. Depression is swept under the rug so often that I think not everybody gets a, f a pure understanding of what depression is. And luckily, I think this year, people are starting to take a stand and, and understand what it is and, and share it. More, I think more people deal with depression, I think, than anything else in the world. I think it's a very, very common thing. Um, some are very severe, some aren't. Um, but I think understanding exactly what's going on and simply seeing depression as something to be taken seriously is a huge step forward to understanding what it is and helping those with it. Um, I mean, you have examples like Robin Williams is a very extreme example. You, you'd see him as like, you know, he's a funny guy, he was a comedian for so long, but then out of nowhere he kills himself. Stuff like that is so preventable. And Robin Williams is a very extreme example, but there are people every day considering what he did. They want to do that because they feel like they've hit a wall and that's it. So I think if there's a much more welcoming understanding of what depression is, I think it's just gonna help everybody involved with depression or anybody who knows somebody with depression. So I think that would be the biggest thing moving forward is simply talking about it and having it a much more serious conversation. I would like to see people not afraid to express that they have depression because I believe that at some point, every human being in some way goes through it and they should not have to be ashamed of it because having to keep your feeling inside will only make things worse. So I want people to be able to express that. When I started this documentary, I felt like something was missing. Like depression was being misrepresented in today's society. And now with the help of these people, Maybe there's a chance for change, to see depression from a new perspective, a psychological one rather than a medical one, with a mix between self-diagnosed and medically diagnosed. I think this was a good representation of what depression actually is, showing that you can get through it and that you can carry on, and that's something that you can live with, even if it's not always easy.